Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over two worked examples to show you how to do problems involving describing the motion of an object from a velocity time graph. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says the velocity time graph for an object is shown below. Describe its motion at each stage. Well we're going to use the time intervals here to describe each stage. So first of all we've got from 0 to 2 seconds, that is a uniform acceleration or constant acceleration. We then have from 2 to 4 seconds along here, that is our constant velocity. And then from 4 to 8 seconds down here, we have a uniform deceleration until the object comes to rest. Then from 8 to 12 seconds, we have a uniform acceleration in the opposite direction. So remember, if we go from above the x-axis to below the x-axis or vice versa, then that tells us the object is changing direction. So we're going from positive velocities into negative velocities here, so we must have that in the opposite direction phrase there. We then have from 12 to 14 seconds, this segment here, that is constant velocity again. And lastly, 14 to 16 seconds, that is a uniform deceleration until the object comes to rest again at 0 meters per second. Lastly, question 2 says the velocity time graph for an object is shown below. And you can see from the graph that we have a zigzag type pattern here. Part A says to describe its motion at each stage. Well again, we're going to use the time segments here to help us describe each stage. Well, first of all, let's talk about 0 to 1 second. Well, because the object is starting at rest, then it must be increasing in velocity, even though it's doing so negatively here. So we're going to say that from 0 to 1 second, it's a uniform acceleration down to here. Then at one second, there's a quick change in direction where the line goes from below the x-axis to above the x-axis. So remember going from below the x-axis to above the x-axis or vice versa shows a change in direction. And you can see it's happening very quickly over a very short period of time. And then between 1 to 2 seconds, we have a uniform deceleration where the object is coming to rest again at the end of the 2 seconds. So we can say that at 2 seconds, the object comes to rest. And then from 2 to 3 seconds and onwards, we can say that the motion repeats. So that whole zigzag pattern up to the 2 seconds will just repeat up to the 4 seconds and then up to the 6 seconds and so on. Part B says, what object does this graph represent? Well, looking back at our graph and our descriptions, will an object that's going to accelerate uniformly and then undergo a quick change in direction and then decelerate uniformly to rest and then repeat that motion could be the velocity time graph for a bouncing ball. And this specific example would be assuming no energy losses because you can see the velocity of the ball after each bounce is remaining the same. So that wouldn't be the case in real life where we do consider energy losses. So for part B, we can say that it's a bouncing ball. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.